Hi there, it's Rob from Octopus. Welcome to Octopus Deployed 2018.5. This month, we're shipping the next generation of our Azure and cloud service support. We're starting with bundling the latest Azure SDK and PowerShell modules. And we're introducing new Azure deployment targets, which improves the consistency and simplicity of your deployments. Let's get started. I have a local octopus running with a single project that we've seen before, and it's called Random Quotes. And I have three environments, dev, test, and production. And now I'm going to head over to our infrastructure page to take a look at what's new there. As I mentioned earlier, we have three environments, dev, test, and production. And in those environments, we have four Azure web app deployment targets, and those are new. And we'll take a look at those shortly. We also have multi-tenant deployments turned on. You can see we have two tenants, Tester Bob and Tester Mary. We're applying the tenant as a tester pattern for our random quotes project. This release is all about Azure and we have two nice improvements in the infrastructure area. The first is our Azure accounts. We've redesigned our Azure account page. And the first thing that you see that's new is usage. So you know what deployment processes, releases, and targets are using this account. We've also reorganized the details required to integrate with Azure. You have your Azure subscription ID, and then your Azure Active Directory tenant ID, or directory ID, and your Azure registered application ID and password. If you need to work with an isolated Azure environment, like Azure Germany or Azure Gov, all those details are now available under Azure Environment, whereas previously they were mixed throughout the other fields and it could have been a little confusing. But thankfully, that's a lot simpler now. The other big change is that we've re-added our Azure Pass deployment targets. You can see here that I have four deployment targets. I have random quotes dev, test, and they're both deployment slots of the main random quotes US Azure web app. And I also have a secondary web app called Random Quotes Europe. As you can see, this shows your cloud services as deployment targets. And it's very clear to see what infrastructure you're working with in what environments. You can filter and work with them in the same manner as standard machines and servers. And it's a nice improvement. This is also very consistent with deployments to Windows or Linux virtual machines. In Octopus, you create releases of projects and deploy them to your environments with one or more targets tagged with roles. This simple yet powerful approach is a lot easier to understand to deploy your apps to multiple services, like different regions as we see here in our production environment. If I try to add a new deployment target, I now have a lot more options. I have the standard tentacle and SSH targets, but there's three new targets, Azure Web App, Azure Cloud Service, and Azure Service Fabric Cluster. These new pass or platform as a service targets make it a lot simpler and more consistent to deploy my apps. If I head back to my deployment targets and I take a look at one, this is an Azure Web App deployment target. You can see it's quite simple to configure. I specify which account I'm using and which web app. In this case, I'm using a web app with a deployment slot. So I have my dev deployment slot with the standard Azure web app or app service, and it's nice and easy to work with. Finally, I'd like to talk about dynamic infrastructure provisioning. Octopus 3.0 launched with similar Azure deployment targets, but we didn't have a strong story around dynamic provisioning. So we reverted back to specific steps for deploying Azure Cloud Services. This time we have a great story around dynamically creating new cloud infrastructure, but also integrating it into Octopus. This is enabled by turning on an option within an environment. If we take a look at our test environment, we currently have a single Azure web app here, and it's for generic testing but we also have a team of testers. We're leveraging the tenant per tester pattern so that any member of our testing team can promote a release from the development environment to the test environment, but
but this will provision entirely new infrastructure. So a brand new web app just for them so they can test independently of anyone else. We'll take a look at our deployment process that enables this, but this scenario is enabled with one small setting. So for any environment, there is an option to allow managing dynamic infrastructure. That's the setting that enables this new support. Now let's head over and take a look at our project. Our deployment process is quite simple. The first two steps take care of our dynamic infrastructure provisioning for our testers, and we'll look at that a bit deeper in a minute. And the third step deploys an ASP.NET MVC web app to Azure. And we'll also take a look at that shortly. The thing I'd like to look at first is our variables. And so here we have a, a reasonably short list. We have a number of Azure variables and some application settings. And all of these application settings, when our application is deployed, any app settings where the setting name matches one of our project variable names will automatically have its value updated. So here we're updating our background color, environment, aim, and release version. So we know what we've deployed. The other thing that I'd like to point out is this Azure account variable. This is a variable where we specify which Azure account we're going to be working with. And by making it a variable, we can easily scope it to change it as we deploy through environments. So if you have a subscription for your dev and test accounts, but you want your production one to use a different subscription, that's very easy. Now I'm going to head back and we'll take a deeper look at our deployment process. Our first step is to create a new Azure resource group. And this is done with a community contributed step template. So it's really quite easy. All I do is I specify the required Azure variables, including my Azure account. And then there's a few things that I also do. Number one, I make sure that this is only run in the test environment and it only applies to tenants with the tester role. This is what I mentioned earlier where we're enabling our testing team to dynamically provision new resources for testing. In this case, an Azure web app. And the first step here is to create an Azure resource group. And if we jump back, our second step is to provision our Azure web app. And this is done with a deploy in Azure resource manager template step or ARM template. So if we take a look at it, this is an updated version of our existing step. And it's a little bit simpler now. You simply specify your account details. And in this case, I bound them to the variables that we already saw for my account and resource group name. And I do have a template here. And so all this is doing is creating a brand new Azure web app. And so the other thing I have done Based on this template, I also bind a few more values for my site name, hosting plan, etc. So all of this takes care of provisioning a brand new Azure web app. I'm also taking advantage of a brand new feature here. So if we take a look at custom features, I have enabled custom deployment scripts. And so with that enabled, what it's allowing me to do is to be able to write scripts to enable me to customize this step. So in this case, what I'm doing is I have a post deployment script. And what I'm doing here is I just get all the parameters I need to be able to create a new Octopus Azure web app target. So once I've created my resource group and the step has run to provision my new web app, I then go ahead and create a new Azure web app target. And what that's going to do is that's going to add a new deployment target to my infrastructure for the specified environment. This is the key bit of glue that enables me to wire up a new Azure web app with Octopus and continue working with it. Now, our final step is to actually deploy our website. This is running a deploy in Azure web app step, and it's really quite straightforward. If we take a look, we can see that one of the key pieces of information now is that we're specifying the role of the deployment targets we're deploying to. So it knows it's looking for Azure Web App Steps and we simply specify that role. So 
one or more deployment targets in our environment with that rule will deploy our web app or package to. So I've only really provided two key bits of information here. One is the role of the targets I'm deploying to. And the second is my package name. So in this case, it's random quote, which is an ASP.NET MVC web app. And then I've gone with the default for the remainder of the settings. Now, the final detail is I have turned on configuration variable replacement. I mentioned when we were looking at our variables that any matching app settings will have the appropriate project variable values substituted. And that's it. It's really quite easy. Now let's head back to our project overview and see everything in action. Now I've been working on a new release and that's version 1.0.16 and I think it's ready. So I've talked to our testing team so that they can deploy that and test it themselves. I'm leveraging multi-tenant deployments for this project, but I'm not deploying to multiple customers in production. I'm applying the tenant per tester pattern so that I can have one, two, or hundreds of testers be able to provision their own cloud infrastructure in Azure and deploy the latest release to it and test it as they need. This is a lesser known benefit of our multi-tenant deployment support, but it's very, very helpful. Now, we've already seen that we only have a single deployment target in our test environment. If we quickly check Azure, we have two app services and two matching resource groups, random quotes US and EU. So now if I head back to Octopus, I'm going to select my existing release, this 1.0.16, and I'm gonna promote it or deploy it to test. Now here I'm deploying to the test environment, but I want to do a tenanted deployment. So I could include all applicable tenants, but here I really want to just say, I want to select my tester's tenant tag. And so by doing this, if I click tenant preview, I can see that it's deploying to my two testers, both Bob and Mary. So that's what I want to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and click deploy. Now this is kicking off and it's deploying to both of our testers, both of our tenants in parallel. So our deployments were successful, which is excellent. If we check back with Azure, we can see that we now have two new app services and matching resources group. So random quotes, Bob tester and Mary dash tester. So if I take a look at one of these and I'll just click browse. Now we can see that we have some great random quotes as a service. If I click refresh a few times, it works great. Now, the other thing that happened in our deployment is that it should have automatically updated our infrastructure. So if I go to infrastructure and look at our environment and look at test, we can see we have two brand new Azure Web App deployment targets registered. This was done dynamically and it just worked great. I'd like to summarize what we've watched today. Octopus 2018.5 introduces our next generation of Azure support, including smaller features like simplified Azure account registration, bigger features like new past deployment targets for more consistent deployments. And finally, we have a much easier dynamic infrastructure provisioning. Thanks for watching. Links for all the resources used in this video are in the description below including a link to start a free 45-day trial of Octopus Deploy. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're adding new videos weekly. Happy deployments!